Hello and welcome to Analog Comics. Today I have to talk about this book, Kikada or Chikada. Not sure how it's pronounced. I would say Kikada. Okay, but it's a comic book by Sean Tan and he's an Australian artist. I did an order for comics a while ago and then in the end there was little room for my budget and I saw this book and um, I've heard of Sean Tan, but I never read any of his works and I've heard a lot of good things about it. This was hardcover and really cheap. So I thought that, okay, this is going to be a sale, really good, you know, bargain. But it turns out that this is a very, very thin book. There might be 30 or 32 pages in it. And in fact, there's so little content here that I will only show you a few pages of it, not to spoil anything. So sorry for that. And the way this is done, it's, it's actually questionable if this is even a comic book. The way it's done is that when you open it, the other side, it's just one picture, one big picture, but they are really well done, like paintings. And the other side is a text page, but there's only three, four lines text. There's so very little text. There, there, there's maybe, uh, somewhere it said that there's only 150 words in the whole comic. So it's almost kind of a silent comic. Well, in a way, it's actually half completely this, uh, silent comic. This is a story of Kikara, this insect here. Uh, he or she, well, let's say he, he works in this office, a uh, massive office building, and he's just kind of um, inputting data. Yeah. For, uh, you know, from morning to evening, he's just inputting data. And he has done that for 17 years. And there is absolutely no respect uh, for this character. He's overlooked, bullied, overworked, and he's not getting any reward for that, basically. In fact, he actually lives within the walls of the office space, you know, where the pipes and everything are. So when you go that far in, in the kind of sad story, it, it's almost um, funny in an absurd way because it's too dark. But it is a sad story. When I got the book, I was really surprised how thin it is. It's um, big in size, hardcover, but very thin. And as I said, there's only kind of one picture in, in one spread. So you don't have a lot of content in uh, uh, visually, but the art is really good. I saw an interview of uh, Sean Tan and what he did, he actually built a model like an um, action figure of Kikada so that he can move uh, him in a different positions. And then he built these spaces where he positions this character. So he can, I guess it's for the shadows and all those. Maybe that's one of the key things why all these pictures have kind of depth in them and they're all very gray and bleak and it intensifies the Kafka-like uh, tone in the story. In the same interview where Shantan showed how he did the action figure, uh, he also told that he very much based the idea of the character to his father. When his father was young, he moved from Malaysia to Australia and the bad experience and some difficulties there were, were one of the uh, inspiration for, for Kikada's story. That's my first feeling of getting this was kind of disappointment because it was so thin and very little content. But reading the comic made me think. It's also those one of those comics that it, you kind of decide what you take from it with you. It's commentary on many things. There's bullying, there's uh, too much work, not getting uh, paid for that or respected, not getting noticed. But one particular thing that I, I think that bear the strongest message here was the little text. As the, as the other side of the book was always a big uh, picture. The other side was just a very few lines, maybe four sentences of text and in a bad English. And that made me think of how people are sometimes treated as something less just because they don't know the language. Uh, it's as if people would think that they are, uh, what's the word, like simpler, like stupider or something like that because they don't know the language. Although in fact, they are actually trying hard to speak your language uh, because quite probably you don't understand their language. 
but still these um, two human reactions uh, surface sometimes and on top of that of course Kikara here he is an insect and I guess ugly looking uh, to the people the, the original people of this office as if that would somehow justify of him being bullied and, and uh, treated very badly. There were many more ideas that came out of this, but that was the main thing that kind of uh, lingered the longest, that how, how sometimes just the appearance makes you value people in a completely wrong way. You, you, you can't see past the, the, the fact that they can't speak your langu language exactly. You know, it, it might even sound funny, but they're trying to tell you something. And so you kind of interpret that in the wrong way. And there's a resolution in the end. It's, um, I would say it's a happy one, but I think it, it's based on who's reading it and how you see this. But because it's such a small book, I mean, it's just a few minute read and it's still a hardcover kind of in a really fine package. I'm kind of thinking like, what is this for? <laughs> it's like, I like it. I, I thought that, you know, because it's such a small story, what if they would place this as an ending or a beginning in, in some of other Sean Tan's books or somewhere else? But I think that it would lost some of its impact. And there is some kind of sad cuteness in the whole thing. This needs the big pictures and it has a really good, nice pictures. But yeah, it, I think this should be the way it is, but still, it's like I'm thinking what it's for. Um, it's not something that I will read every week, but I know that I will come back to this because it, it, it's very fast read. It says here in the back that it's uh, Hodder's children's books. I, I just noticed this. So I guess this could be also meant for children. I liked it anyway, despite that. But I wouldn't maybe recommend this to the youngest children because the start is really sad and some scenes could upset the youngest children but you know when they grow a bit this could be a uh, nice ways to present certain themes to talk about with children and as the story talks about this Kikara who has worked for 17 years in this office without any real reward and just being kind of bullied around I could see myself giving to this some of my friends that are wishing to get that, you know, courage to take the leap and, you know, maybe leave their work that they're not happy with to take the next step, you know, go for, try to find better life. This could be very supportive and give that, you know, final push in, in and strengthen that idea at least. And because I didn't know what Kikara means, I had to Google it. And it turned out that it's an actual uh, insect that exists. Uh, they make that tick, 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 noise in the bushes. And I ended up reading more about Kikaras than I thought. But it was a good thing that I went a bit too far in that insect section because I found out that there is an actual Kikara, certain type of Kikara in, and I think they are all located in America, that leaves underground to 13 to 17 years before they surface. So knowing how the story ends and that knowledge, um, it makes sense. And it could be that Sean Tan has also read the same article as I did. That's it, not going to make this any longer. Nice, weird, fast, sad, and really evokes feelings and thoughts that linger. That's what I would say about this. But I, I did buy this book because I had heard about Sean Tan and I later realized when I got this, I had I went to see what, what his other works are like. And it turned out that his other books are a bit longer and, and those are the ones that made his fame, so to speak, in, in the comic scene. But nevertheless, I enjoyed the book and it's actually one of those that I might try to um, loan, like forcefully loan to certain friends of mine. But thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.